we are going to look at this entire um, nervous system model here. It's a long one, but um, I'm going to take it kind of one part at a time. So, so it's just going to be easier that way. All right. So obviously when we look at central nervous system, we have brain and we have spinal cord. That's central nervous system. Everything coming off of that is peripheral nervous system. So one thing that you see here are the paired spinal nerves. And again, the spinal nerves, just so you know, are going to be in yellow. And all of this that you see here, for example, this is skull. These are all cut bones and these are vertebrae. By the time we get down here, we're looking at uh, the rib cage. Obviously, when we get down here, we're getting back to the lumbar vertebrae. But you can assume that the thoracic vertebrae are in this region right here. So let me point out a few things first. When you see the nerves coming together like this, sort of blending together or braiding together, that's what a plexus is. In fact, a plexus is a braid, okay? So this is what we call the cervical plexus. This is C1 through C5. This is the brachial plexus. We call it brachial plexus because it's gonna go out the brachium, out your arm. That's C5 through T1. Then we come Further down here, we get into the lumbar plexus. That's T12 through L4. And then we get even further down here, and we have the sacral plexus. That's L4 through S4. Okay? Uh, and again, it, they just sort of braid together and create, oftentimes, again, these, this braiding pattern that expands and, and feeds into the different areas of the body. Uh, let's start from the top and let's count our spinal nerves, okay? One thing that's a little bit confusing to most students is what happens right here in the cervical region. So if you remember your bone anatomy, uh, one of the things that I teach my students is breakfast, lunch, and dinner. 7, 12, 5. Breakfast at 7, lunch at 12, dinner at 5. That's the number of cervical, thoracic, and lumbar bones that we have. Keep in mind, it's not the same for nerves, okay? So for nerves, it's actually the first three are going to be, the first three sets are going to be 8, 12, and then 5. So the reason that happens is actually because we have a nerve on top, and then we have a nerve at the very bottom of the cervical region. So let me explain what I mean. So this is your skull right here. Right under your occipital bone right there, at that foramen magnum where your spinal cord comes out, we actually have nerve C1. So this is gonna be nerve C1 followed by bone C1. Nerve C2 followed by bone C2. Nerve C3, bone C3. Nerve C4, bone C4. Nerve C5, bone C5. Six, six, seven, seven. And then nerve C8. This is kind of like a transition nerve because what happens now? From this point south, from here inferior, Instead of it being nerve followed by the bone, it's now bone followed by the nerve. So this is going to be, it's a rib cage, but it's going to be bone T1, nerve T1, bone T2, nerve T2, bone T3, nerve T3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6, 7, 7, 8, 8, 9, 9, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, and this should make sense that it's 12. Why? Because it's right under your ribs. Remember, you've got 12 ribs here. So that's the end of the thoracic region. Then we get to lumbar, and it just follows the same pattern. From Again, from here on down, it's bone, then nerve. So this is bone L1, nerve L1, bone L2, nerve L2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5. Then we get to the sacrum. Remember, the sacrum is cut up here, so it's gonna, you're still going to see the bones, but it's going to be S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. Then the coccygeal nerve, again, paired on, that's the final pair. And then phylum terminal, that's the, that's the very last nerve coming down at the end of the coccyx. You can also see, again, the spinal cord coming down like this. Spinal cord ends at something called the conus medullaris, sort of has this cone shape to it. 
And then from there, we have the cauda equina. Caudal means tail, equina from the term equus meaning horse. It's literally the horse's tail, okay? A uh, few more uh, individual nerves I want to point out in this model just because it's kind of easy to see. Um, we've got the phrenic nerve coming down right here. This is the phrenic nerve. Um, if we go uh, further down from here, the, here's the last rib. So that makes this one the subcostal nerve. Sub meaning under, costa means rib, so subcostal nerve. That's kind of an easy one. Uh, if you follow from here, you can actually see the femoral nerve going right past the head of the femur. So femoral nerve, this one's going to go all the way down. And then this very large braid coming together creates the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve is that big one that runs down the leg. Uh, also, on this side, it's not an anatomical position because you can see the radius and the ulna crossing. But over here, it's actually pretty easy to see. Uh, if you remember your bone anatomy, the radius goes to the thumb and the ulna goes to the pinky, which makes this very easy. This is the radial nerve. This is the ulnar nerve. And in between them, we have the median nerve. So I know there's a lot going on in this model, but if you understand it, um, it, it does make good sense. Okay, we're gonna look at this one. Keep in mind, it's a model of the nervous system of man. <laughs> Just sounds so silly, like it's, 1800s or something.